Einstein turbine is a machine that transforms the potential energy contained in a mass of steam into uh, mechanical energy. This video is divided into parts. In this first part, we will see in a schematic way the different elements that compose uh, a steam turbine. After, in the second part of this video, we will see pictures about this different element of a steam turbine. First of all, it is necessary to uh, classify the turbines, the, the steam turbine, according with these different criteria. We have at least five type, uh, five criteria uh, to divide the steam turbines. The first one is according uh, with the mechanism of transformation. The second one is according with the inlet pressure. The third one is according with the outlet pressure. Uh, the next one is according with the extraction and the last one is according with the possibility to have multi-inlet. According with the mechanism of transformation, we have uh, action turbine and reaction turbine. We will see uh, this difference uh, after. The second uh, classification is according with the inlet pressure. We have um, high pressure turbine, medium pressure turbine and low pressure turbine. Uh, more or less, uh, when the pressure is around 100 bar or more, we talk about a uh, high pressure turbine. When the uh, pressure is around 25, uh, more or less, uh, 25, we talk about uh, intermediate pressure turbine or medium pressure turbine. And finally, when the inlet pressure is uh, around 10 bar or less, we talk about uh, low pressure turbines. The third classification is according with the uh, outlet pressure. And according with this pressure, we have two types of turbines. Back pressure turbine, uh, and in this case, the pressure in the outlet is uh, more than one bar, and condensing uh, turbines. In, in this case, the pressure uh, is uh, under uh, one bar. According with the possibility to have an extraction, of course, we have turbines with extraction and uh, turbines without uh, extraction. Uh, extraction means the possibility to extract some part of the flow of the steam to do something with this uh, flow. And according with the possibility to have multi-inlet, is uh, the, we divide the turbines uh, between the, the turbines that has intermediate inlet uh, in the flow uh, from the inlet to the outlet in one intermediate point we introduce uh, steam or not. In this uh, diagram we can see better the difference between the action turbine and the reaction turbine. Uh, the left we have the, the impulse turbine or action turbine and I see that the steam push uh, the, the blades and then the turbine uh, rotate. But in case of reaction turbine, the steam is under pressure, is depressurized, and after in this depressurization, the velocity of the steam and the outlet is zero and communicate this energy to the blade. Probably in this uh, second diagram, we can understand better the difference between uh, impulse or action turbine and uh, reaction turbine. Uh, see that what happened uh, in the first case. In the first case, uh, um, we lose all the pressure in the outlet of the nozzle, and uh, then in this point, the pressure is uh, very low, but the velocity is very high then uh, we change pressure by velocity. The steam beat the blade and the blade uh, rotate. This is in the first case. In the second case, what happened, you can see that in the nozzle, the nozzle is between the blades. When uh, the, um, the steam goes in the, in the intersection of two blades, uh, and uh, all the pressure is there and in this space. In the outlet, 
lose the uh, the pressure but the velocity in this uh, when the steam goes out is zero is uh, no velocity and uh, communicate the velocity to the blades if we can see all the criterion um, that we have seen in the, in the previous uh, slide we can see more or less till 11 types of turbines uh, we have the, the the most common turbine is the straight condensing goes from the inlet to the outlet at the outlet is under pressure is a uh, under vacuum the steam uh, goes in uh, in the inlet and goes out by the outlet at the outlet uh, goes is connected to a condenser second type is the same but we uh, extract some amount of steam to do something with this steam probably to use this steam for another application or use this steam to increase the temperature of the water steam cycle and this is very very common in a, for example in confined cycle or um, in coal plant or on biomass plant we use this type of uh, turbine see for example the seven one seventh one is very common in a combined cycle uh, we can see that the terrain is divided into parts in a in in the first part the steam goes in uh, has uh, some pressure and goes out to goes to the reheater and after the hot reheater steam goes in again uh, to the turbine and after uh, the, the outlet goes to a condenser very common is the eighth the, in the eighth we can see that the mm, is a, like the first one the straight condensing but uh, we mm, does not condense the steam the steam is um, under pressure it has, uh, has some pressure and we use this steam to do something which are the main parameter of a steam turbine main parameter uh, this one first one supplier model second one is type of turbine uh, if an impulse reaction mix it uh, uh, according with the inlet pressure high pressure medium intermediate pressure or low pressure and uh, according with the uh, outlet pressure remember condensing or, or back pressure one uh, characteristic mm, very important of a steam turbine is uh, of course the power and uh, even the minimum power or the technical minimum power is uh, the power that uh, at least uh, it is necessary to have this power to uh, maintain the turbine uh, rotating normally in a steam turbine is uh, around 10 percent of the maximum uh, power the efficiency of the turbine uh, remember that we need to, to distinct between the uh, efficiency of the water steam cycle and the efficiency of the turbine the efficiency of the turbine is very high the energy contained in the steam uh, if we take this energy and we rest the energy that goes out and goes to the condenser the difference between energy we need to uh, consider we need to calculate uh, how much of this energy inlet less outlet and uh, which is the, the the energy that is transformed in mechanical energy and uh, remember that this is very high is uh, only the losses that we have by the casing and the losses that we have in the buildings the speed of rotation is another characteristic very important uh, normally is uh, the, the most common situation is uh, that the, the turbine rotate at the same frequency of the grid but in a small turbines this is not normal uh, and uh, the turbine normally rotate uh, a high speed a uh, speed mm, bigger than the uh, frequency of the uh, electrical energy inlet and outlet temperature and inlet and outlet uh, pressure are another two characteristics very important and the last one is the time to start the time that lasts the process to accelerate the turbine synchronize and uh, reach full power this time is a very important characteristic 
which are the main element. The main element of a turbine is the shaft, the uh, veins and blades, the rotor, casing, the bearings, journal bearing and truss bearing, uh, the systems like a gland steam and labyrinth seal, the trains, the valves that are in the inlet, control and stop valve, the turning gear, a mechanism to maintain rotating the turbine when the turbine is hot, uh, the control system and uh, other auxiliary system like lubricating system, hydraulic oil and hood spray. This is the rotor and uh, we can see that the rotor is composed by uh, two, at least two elements. One of them is the, uh, the shaft and the second one are the, uh, the blades that are connected uh, to the shaft. The assembly uh, shaft plus blade are called rotor. The casing is the element that seal the steam and uh, maintain the steam uh, under pressure. Uh, connect, of course, the inlet uh, with the outlet. The casing supports different elements like the veins, like the uh, housing of the bearings and uh, some part of the labyrinth seal. And of course, the casing is connected to the grounding system. Remember that the casing sometimes is hot, sometimes is cold. That means that uh, the, the casing suffer some expansion and the support must be designed to uh, allow this expansion, this movement then normally one part is fixed and the other part uh, moves. Normally the part that is connected with the generator is fixed, is a fixed point and the expansion is made uh, through the outlet. This is the normal situation. There is uh, another turbine that has an uh, opposite situation depending on the, of the design, of course. This sensor is important because uh, this sensor measures the expansion of the shaft and uh, even the expansion of the casing. But uh, this sensor uh, measures if this expansion is well done uh, or not. The loop oil allow, is an uh, auxiliary system of the turbine and uh, uh, allow the lubrication of the bearings. And the mechanism that allow the inlet of the steam and the mechanism that allow the outlet of the steam are uh, another part of the steam turbine. In the inlet, normally, we have uh, uh, two valves. One of them is called a stop valve. And this stop valve of emergency, the stop valve allow or block, does not regulate, only allow or block, yes or not and even it has a mechanism to close very fast the inlet uh, of the steam. This is because the, when the generator is disconnected, remember that the turbine is rotating to a fixed uh, speed. That means that the force that impulse the turbine and the force that break the turbine are compensated. If we disconnect the generator, we discompensate these forces, then we have only forces that push, that impulse the turbine. Then the turbine accelerates in order to avoid this acceleration uh, that can be dangerous for the turbine. We need to block immediately the, uh, the inlet of the steam. And for that reason, this valve that must have a mechanism to close uh, very fast the inlet of the steam together with the uh, stop uh, valve, we have a regulating valve, a control valve that control uh, how, um, which is the, 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 the orifice to open or close the uh, amount of steam, the flow of steam. Then uh, this control valve, valve allow that the turbine generate more mechanical power or less mechanical power or even uh, increase the speed or uh, decrease the speed depending on the mode of control of the turbine. In order to control these two valves, uh, say the stop valve and the control valve, we normally, normally, these valves are 
hydraulic valve. Why hydraulic? Remember that in one, uh, one valve, the actuator of the valve can be uh, managed by three types of mechanism. One of them is hydraulic, the second one is pneumatic, and the third one is electric. Normally in the steam turbine we have hydraulic because the accurate of the regulation and because uh, the speed of the regulation. Uh, in case we, uh, we don't have this hydraulic valve, we have pneumatic uh, valve. The, it's very, very strange, it's not normal to have electric uh, valves for the regulation. Next element are the labyrinth seal. This labyrinth seal uh, block or uh, inhibit the possibility to have leakage of steam uh, by the two sides of the, uh, the shaft. Uh, this uh, mechanism is a mechanism that, that provoke uh, a loose of pressure mm, and uh, is uh, very sophisticated. We will see in a, another video how works the labyrinth seal. The glanestine is one element uh, that we need to uh, allow that the uh, labyrinth seal works properly. We will see in, uh, in uh, another video how works the labyrinth seal and the glanestine. Even we need the gland steam condenser and uh, this uh, try to condensate the steam that we need to block uh, the steam inside of the turbine. The turning gear is a mechanism that uh, allows that the turbine rotate a little bit uh, a very very slow speed when the turbine is hot. Uh, remember that uh, when the, the turbine stops the turbine is uh, very hot, the shaft and the casing are very hot. And what happens? Uh, mm, uh, normally the, uh, the steam and the turbine, the casing, the shaft start to decrease the temperature. When the air and the steam that are inside of the turbine lose temperature, the cold air or cold steam goes by the lower part of the turbine and then the, there is a create a difference of temperature between the uh, upper part and the lower part. This difference of temperature provoke a different expansion between the upper part of the shaft and the lower part of the shaft and provoke that the uh, shaft go like this, bend the shaft. This is called banana effect. And uh, in order to avoid this banana effect, we need to rotate a little bit, uh, very, uh, a very low speed, normally 5 revolutions per minute, 10 revolutions per minute, in some cases 15 revolutions per minute, but this is very slow, till the casing uh, was called, and uh, when the casing is around uh, 100, 100 something, uh, the, we can stop. Uh, the turning gear mechanism. The, this turning gear mechanism can be, uh, actu can be uh, actuated by the electric motor, hydraulic motor or even pneumatic motor. But we need uh, a motor to uh, turn in the uh, shaft. The hood spray is uh, another auxiliary system that we need for the turbine is in order to decrease the temperature of the uh, steam at the outlet. When the flow of the steam is low, uh, what happens with the steam? In increase the temperature. This increase of the temperature inside of the turbine, only when the flow is very low, uh, provoke that the temperature of the steam increase. And then what happened in the outlet? Uh, the last row of blades are very large and the expansion uh, provoked by the increase of the temperature at the outlet, provoke that the uh, uh, blade increase the size and can touch the casing. Uh, then, in order to cool down the steam or to cool down the outlet uh, of the turbine, we need to uh, introduce water that is evaporated, and in this process of, of evaporation, still 
um, energy to the outlet and decrease the temperature in the outlet. Uh, and this, uh, this mechanism is called hood spray and remember is to cool down the steam at the outlet uh, to avoid problems uh, in the last row uh, of the blades. And these are main elements of uh, a steam turbine splined in a schematic way. In the next video we will see this different element uh, with pictures. Thank you.